Hello YouTube, this is uh, that BMX guy. This is my video on the Sturmy Archer SRF3 three speed internal gear hub. So, you have this new style SRF3, it came out around 2010. This in particular one is 32 hole. In the last video, I was showing you a 36 hole hub. So we'll start by taking it apart. We'll take all these nuts and stuff off first. These are the important keyed washers to keep the axle from spinning in your dropout. You should have these on both sides. And it's recommended to put them on the outside and facing this key forward so it kind of grips the dropout. We have the indicator chain nut and the other piece. Now if you have a vise, you can stick in the vise here. This end nut is a 17 millimeter, so use a 17 millimeter wrench that I just have it already loose. Unscrew it onto the, this axle that's a mile long. These newer SRS3s can work up to a 135 frame. Unscrew the non dry side cone nut. These cone nuts are pretty. They're just basically the same as that thing on the AW and other hubs. They're easy to find. Flip the hub over. If you have it in the vise, just do that. In this case, you may want to hammer the ball ring loose with a hammer and punch. I did that in the other videos. But you, there actually is a spanner that exists that grips these little keys and you can undo it even though when it's not in a built into a wheel that wrench is kind of useless and the hammer and punch will be better anyway this is loose already so I'm just gonna unscrew it and it unscrews kind of clockwise inside you'll see that it has a ratchet ring that's 20 points of engagement make it have a little bit more responsiveness in the pedaling versus the older AW. So here's the cartridge. Um, the cartridge actually is a little simpler. Uh, these paws can't just fall off. There's a circlet hole in them. And it does physically look different than the AW. Place this in the vice like so. Unscrew this 17 millimeter nut. There's a washer on this one. That this washer doesn't even need to be here for me. I might not even put it at the end of the video. Unscrew. The drive side cone nut, which is the same as a non drive side, so you don't really have to worry about which one's which. Pull out the spring. There should be a rubber, or I guess that's rubber. It's either plastic or rubber. Just keep that with the spring. You won't lose it if you keep them together. Pull off the driver which will take the bearing race off with it. That's the first real difference that you see is this driver has paws on it. And this bearing ring is a cage. It's plastic. That's just retained. This has a set of paws that actually are pushed down with this plate called an actuator plate. But in the middle of it, that's where the clutch engages. The ball ring. 
has four outside prongs and it has 20 points of engagement on the inside that are actually offset so that this flange is using those poles since they're deeper on this thing. This in particular thing is a ring gear. The ring gear actually has a ratchet inside that has 10 points of engagement to engage to that driver. It has a little bit more thickness to it on the end. And the paws, I'm holding with my hand just to keep them from coming apart, can just easily fall out because these pins are the only thing holding them in. And they have those little tiny springs like the older hubs have. So it's best to hold the ring gear like this. Pull off the clutch. The clutch is a little bit different. It has a round profile. It's all one big piece like this, like a, I don't know, a hat. Just a big hat with keys on it. The keys go into that driver. The, the actual axle key that goes to your indicator chain is just a square piece. And then the planetary cage just comes off like that. The axle is a little bit different. It has a bulge right here and this slot's a little bit more lengthy. The whole axle, like I said, it can work with a 135 frame. This planetary cage has a circlet ball, so you don't have to worry about that. And each of these planetary gears are held in with a pin. The pin is just a straight pin, but the gear itself is very similar to the AW. It's, I think it's the same size, but the pin doesn't have a little tip on it. I'm just gonna leave them in there for the fact that you're better off just leave them in there. And the way this hub is, it's supposed to be greased, but the grease that's on there is okay. But after about 100 to 500 miles, you may want to take this apart, clean every piece, and then just go to oil. Just go to 10W30 oil. Okay, so right now, we'll put the hub back together. Uh, <clears throat> we start off with the gear cage, planetary cage. Slide that right on, it goes right on, like so. <clears throat> Next step is to get this clutch key into here. If you remember how it was facing, like there should be more wear facing a certain direction, I don't know. But it might have more wear facing up or down. Just Put it the way it was. The clutch just then slides right over and sits right on these pins. The next part that goes back on is the gear ring, which went on right on with no problems. Then proceed to put this in place, this ball ring. And all that stuff should be pretty smooth already. You can put the driver on, uh, maybe finagle it. It's actually a very difficult entryway. Once it's in there, it should be fine. It shouldn't have that much play. Then you stick the spring, make sure this plastic thing is facing the right way. It kind of goes over top of the spring like surrounds it it will fight you to get on there <clears throat> next is right on the drive side cone okay so once it's threaded pretty much hand tight loosen it quarter turn like you would on any other storm dryer on the drive side <clears throat> this actually doesn't have the nice washer that holds it still, so I'll just once 
Once that's right where it needs to be. Just tighten it down. And that's the unit back together. It should spin pretty freely. Even with grease like that. So you just thread the shell back on. It might bite you a little bit there, but if you hear it clicking, that means it's in right. I'm just gonna hand tighten it. At this point, you can use the spanner, or you can actually just use a hammer and punch and just tap it tighter. <clears throat> After you snug up with Anzo and it's just hand tight like that, your pedaling alone will tighten it. So you don't necessarily need to tighten it that much. We'll put on the non dry side cone too. Take a while to thread on. And just tighten it by hand a little bit. <clears throat> just put the lock nut against the cone. And then with the 16 millimeter, let me adjust it a little bit. Figure out where it needs to be. Um, it should be like a slight bit of play that you can sort of feel, but that's about right. Okay, so that was taking apart and putting together the Sturmy Rusher SRF3 three speed internal gear hub. Uh, you can look up my Instagram, which is that BMX guy. If you want to, you can subscribe. I usually just post some of these how to videos, but I, I try just to post my rides and my BMX stuff. Anyway, thanks for watching.